Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Hello, everyone. I want to welcome you to Tuesday Night Live Bible Study. We are so delighted that you've tuned in this evening. My name is Julianne Harris, and so let's get right into the announcements so we can hear from uh, Daniel Amstutz tonight. I'm excited for what he's bringing us. So first of all, these uh, Bible studies we do five days a week. So uh, let me go over the schedule, and there's a reason why. So on Mondays and Fridays, we do live Bible study at 10 a.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays is at 6 p.m., and Wednesday morning is at 7 a.m., and that is all mountain time. So I tell you the times of those so that you can tune in while we're live. So uh, why should you tune in while you're live? So that you can uh, while we're alive, <laughs> so that you can interact with us, okay? So as you have questions, enter into your heart and your mind, we want you to type those into the chat section of whatever forum you are watching, and then the last 10 to 15 minutes of the program, we're gonna get to as many of your questions as we possibly can. Another amazing thing, uh, not another, a, an amazing thing that makes Tuesday nights really special is that we do a drawing for a free product. And so listen sharp so that you know how to enter into this drawing. So uh, we do live Bible study notes for Tuesday night only. So that means whatever you hear from Daniel tonight, you will receive the live Bible study notes next week, Monday morning in an email format. So, but you have to sign up for those Bible study notes. And when you sign up for those Bible study notes, that is when you are entered into the drawing. So this is how you do it. You go to awmi.net slash study, and then you're going to put in your information there. And when you do that for the first time, then you are entered into a drawing to win a free product. So last week, the winner of the drawing was Ray Wilson, and he won Andrew's book, Harnessing Your Emotions, which is absolutely powerful book. This week, if you've never signed up for the Bible study notes, I would encourage you to do so. And then when you do, you will be entered into a drawing to win this book, which is Living in God's Best by Andrew. It's an amazing book, once again. Um, next, we have events that are coming up, you guys. Uh, one of our biggest is Healing is Here. It's like one of the most amazing, um, power-packed, conferences, uh, when you see people get up out of the wheelchairs, throwing their crutches and their walkers away and, and being heal, healed, um, it does something for you. And so I just wanna encourage you, that's gonna be August 9th through the 12th. It's a four day conference of nothing but just God's love and his healing power that will flow through your life. So um, also we have Truth and Liberty Conference that's coming up September 9th through and the 10th, I believe it is. And also, um, if you have more questions about those conferences, please go check it out at awmi.net slash events. So I would encourage you to try to get here for the conferences, but I do know that they will be live streamed as well in case you can't make it. But do your best to get here. It's, it's amazing to be in person. Um, next, we have gospeltruth.tv. That's 24 hours a day, seven days a week of Andrew and friends. So um, you don't have to guard your heart and your mind of, you know, potentially some bad doctrine coming through. You can just go over there, check it out. Uh, I would encourage you, so you just go to your web browser, you type in gospeltruth.tv and it'll take you there. Also, we have prayer ministers available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So no matter what time you're watching this program, if you're going through something, don't go through it alone. Uh, give them a call right now at 719-635-1111. And while you're on the line with them and you have been blessed by these Bible studies and by all the free content that comes out of Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College, I would encourage you to consider becoming a partner. So you can become a partner while you're on the phone at that same phone number at 719-635-1111. Or you can go to awmi.net slash give. Um, and even if you're not ready to become a partner, any gift is amazing and just helps send this message out across the world and you can be a part of it by giving. So I believe that is all my announcements. Yes. 
And so now I get to introduce Daniel Amstutz, our guest minister this evening. Uh, he's one of my favorites. We always have a fun time together. And so let me go over Daniel's titles in case you haven't, in case you didn't know, now you're gonna know. <laughs> <laughs> he wears many hats at Karis Bible College. And so first of all, he is the director of Karis Worship. Um, and so that is all the worship that comes out of Karis Bible College. You've probably seen it. Um, he's the director over that. He's also director of Healing School. So he's uh, somewhat the visionary also of this Healing is Here conference. Absolutely amazing. Um, he, so he's the director of Healing School and he's also the director of the third year worship arts uh, school that has numerous tracks within it, but you're kind of a busy so-and-so, aren't you? Yeah, I really am, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for the, taking the time out to come and Absolutely. minister to us. So I'm handing it over to you. We're ready whenever you are. Julianne, thank you so much. Yes. And thank you for joining us tonight, wherever you are joining us from around the world. What a blessing. I'm so grateful to Andrew for this vision that he and Jamie have about bringing the Word of God on a daily basis. It's been incredible, hasn't it? It's awesome. Just to see how many people are being blessed yes. and to be a part of this, yes. it's incredible. Yeah, it's right? amazing. And you know, we always get comments and um, meet people at conferences. Uh, I know I meet a lot of people that you're watching and your lives are being changed. You're yeah. literally being discipled five days a week through these live Bible studies. I know I am. Yeah. I'm like, wow, Lord. We're all we're all benefiting. Yeah, we yeah. really are. It's amazing. And really seriously, thank you for partnering with us yes. because we are so grateful that we are able to get this literally around the world. Amen. People need to hear the word of God. And as I was praying about what to share, uh, I really felt like the Lord said to teach on, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Ooh, I'm so excited about this tonight. So are you ready? Yes. We're going to get into the word of God as we always do and find out what God's word, what the good report says, because we've got a lot of news happening in our culture today, but a lot of it is uh, on, on media, on television, is not good news, not but God has good news for us. This is what the gospel is all about. And he's looking for those who will believe the report of the Lord. So let's get into the Word of God. In John, uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 1, Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. Now, I, I want you to see that tonight. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Now, do you think Jesus would have said, let not your heart be troubled if there wasn't a way for us to do it? <laughs> I mean, that would be cruel, right? right. And, and God is good. Uh, God is love. And when God says, don't let your heart be troubled, it's because he's given us a way for that to actually happen Amen. to where we don't have to live with a troubled heart. Well, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, a very familiar uh, verse around Karis Bible College and Andrew Walmack Ministries, verse 23, clearly shows us that we are spirit, soul, and body. It says, I pray that your whole spirit, soul, and body would be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we can see that God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you. In other words, set you apart from the ways of the world. God says, I want you to be so set apart from the ways of the world that your whole spirit, your whole soul, and your whole body are preserved blameless. Wow. That is so powerful. Do you know, uh, when God says this, let not your heart be troubled, I think probably the first thing we should ask ourselves is, so what is the heart exactly? Mm -hmm. When God says, let not your heart be troubled, what, what is the heart? Well, uh, through study of the Word of God, we discover that the heart is actually our spirit and our soul in combination. It refers to the whole inner man. And whatever is in your spirit will influence your soul. This is really true for unbelievers as well as believers. Mm -hmm. When you're an unbeliever, even though your spirit was not alive unto God and you were being dictated by the uh, lust of your flesh and just kind of whatever you wanted to do is what you did, your spirit and your soul were in agreement. They were just lost. They were unrenewed. That you were an unbeliever, not a believer, but they were in unity. 
Well, when you become a believer, the part of you that becomes brand new is your spirit man. This is the part of you that has the spirit of God living in it and you become a brand new creation. When God is living in you, your spirit man is where he lives and when he comes in, it is an instant transformation. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that all things become new. Amen? Amen? And the all things becoming new is in your spirit man. You become a brand new creation, right? So through the word of God and fellowship with the Holy Spirit, we learn to submit our soul to our spirit man and thus to the spirit of God. So our spirit becomes new, but you know what? Our soul does not become new when we become born again. It's in the process of being renewed. Our spirit, it's instant transformation. We become brand new and we become a brand new creation, but our soul is now in the process of being saved. Our soul, which contains our will, our mind, our emotions, I believe even our imagination, even our motivation gets connected with our soul. This area of our lives that God wants us to be completely set apart with is in the process of being renewed and being restored. Well, here's why this is important. Because whatever is in our spirit man, in this case as a believer, is going to influence what is happening in our soul. Amen. Amen. The spirit of God is our helper. He's our teacher. He leads us into truth. He, he shows us things to come and he helps us to do what we could never do in the natural. And so the impossible literally can become possible by the spirit of God and by yielding to the word of God. When you hear the word of God, your spirit already is alive unto God. So your spirit knows that it's truth. Mm -hmm. That's why you have that moment of, I knew it. Yeah. Well, how did you know it? By the spirit of God that's alive in your human spirit. I like what Andrew says. He says, when you're born again, your human spirit becomes wall to wall God. <laughs> I love that, like wall to wall carpeting, right? <laughs> so living inside out for us as new believers, as new creations is nothing like living outside in. And in John 7, 38, Jesus said this, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart, I want you to say that tonight with me. Out of his heart. Out of his heart. Out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Verse 39, but this he spoke concerning the spirit, the Holy Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. So it's clear that God's design for us now as new covenant believers, because we have the spirit of God living in us is to be living from this place of the spirit in our spirit, or we could say living inside out. Mm -hmm. So what's going on on the inside of us is going to determine how we live our lives. It's going to determine what's happening on the outside of us. And again, we know we're spirit, we are soul, and we live in a body. So it's amazing. Julianne was talking about the Healing is Here conference coming up. Yeah. Do you know when your spirit and your soul get in agreement with the Word of God, it's just a matter of, of time before your body has to get into agreement Amen. with your spirit and your soul. Amen. It's, it's powerful. When those symptoms of sickness and disease are trying to come against your body, when your spirit and your soul get into agreement with spirit and truth, two against one, I'm telling you, it is two against one and body doesn't stand a chance. Amen. Body's going to come into alignment because of what you believe in your heart. Amen. And as you believe in your heart will determine how you live your life from the inside out. Amen. So Jesus said, going back to John 14, let not your heart be troubled. Okay. So we know that our inward man is being renewed day by day, even though our outward man is growing older. The Bible says in the King James, our outward man is perishing. That just means that we're, we're all getting older, but our inward man is being renewed or restored. How often? Day by day. Hallelujah. Amen. So he says here, I don't want you to live with a troubled heart. 
let not your heart be troubled. Now, it's interesting, this word for troubled in the Greek is the word terasso, which means to be agitated or stirred up with anxiousness, to be agitated or stirred up with dread or with fear. A modern way of saying this is, in other words, being stressed out. Okay, I mean, just plain and simple, right? The word picture that we get from this is agitated water. Uh, you know, just yesterday, in fact, we were uh, we did a ministry trip in Oregon, and we just got back late last night. But uh, we were crossing a bridge at one point that had a huge dam over on the right side. And as the water was coming over the dam, when it went down into the river, that water was so agitated. It was just, it looked like it was boiling up. And this is the word picture that we get from someone who's living with a troubled heart. Mm. He says, I don't want your heart to be agitated. I don't want it to be bubbling over with anxiousness, with fear or with dread. Mm. Wow, you know what? A lot of people want to believe the word of God, but what they really believe is that their future is absolutely not looking good. They want healing, but they actually are expecting sickness and disease. Mm. They want to live life abundantly, but they're actually expecting dread. Uh, as the expression goes, they're waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yeah. Well, this is living with a troubled heart. And God says, let not your heart be troubled. So again, there must be a way for us to not live with a troubled heart. And the good news tonight, church, is that there absolutely is. Praise God. God does not want that for us. Jesus said, don't allow that to happen to you. Well, we know that God is the one from Psalm 23. We're not going to look at it tonight, but God's the one who restores our soul and he leads us beside still water. Amen. Amen. He doesn't lead us into agitated water and, and, and trouble us from the inside out. No, that's not God. Uh, this word for troubled is also used in Acts chapter 15 and verse 24. And sometimes it's helpful to look at another verse where this same Greek word is used to see in context if it gives us a little bit more understanding as to letting not our hearts be troubled. Well, it does. Listen to this. Since we heard that some who went out from us have troubled you with words unsettling your souls. Isn't that something? Mm. Unsettling your souls, saying you must be circumcised and keep the law. And Paul says, to whom we gave no such commandment. Well, what are they doing here? They're troubling you, but they're troubling you how? With words. And they're unsettling your soul as a result of the words that they have spoken. Did you know that you can let somebody's words trouble you? Hmm. Oh yeah, you can let someone's words actually unsettle your soul to the point that you're living with agitated water on the inside of you. You are living with a troubled heart. And you know what? It is not how God designed for us to live. So when words are spoken against you, when words are said about you or over you that are contrary to the word of God, what, what do you do? Well, you take authority over them when you know what God has done for you and that he's given you authority in the name of Jesus to be able to condemn those words, yeah. amen, and to know that no weapon formed against you will prosper. No words of judgment like that do you have to ever take into your life as if they are the truth. No. This word for troubled is such a powerful word in the Greek because as we learn to not live with a troubled heart, then we're going to come up with just the opposite. We're going to live with an untroubled heart instead of a troubled heart as a result. You know what? There's a lot of crazy going on in the world right now in there, <laughs> right? Yeah. And it's impossible not to see what's going on. Yeah, definitely. Right? But we don't have to let that become part of our heart. Right. Right? Yeah. We're in the world, but not oh. of the world. Amen. But it's all around us. And Amen. so we have to make this quality decision, as I like to call it, to say, you know what? That may be all out there, but I don't have to live like that. That's it. I don't have to be conformed to that. I can actually decide I'm going to learn how to live with a heart that's not troubled. Absolutely. Wow. 
Yeah, that's powerful. That's so powerful. Just to know that you have the choice. Yes. That's what being conformed to this world looks like is that, well, when this happens, this is how you have to respond. Right. You know, and so that's part of that conformity. But once we get tapped into this, and yeah. I love that word troubled, how you described it as that yeah, agitated, the agitated water. Agitated water. Because how many of us have been there oh, to where man. it's like you feel just agitated right? with everything? Yeah. Isn't it amazing how once that agitation starts, how it affects your thought life? It does. How it affects your, your emotions, relationship. Yeah, your, your relationship, emotions, everything. All of it. Everything gets affected, it right? Does. Yeah. And I'm telling you, when that starts to happen, the enemy would love for us to stay in that place of being stressed out, mm -hmm. right? But God says, no, you don't have to live that way. I don't want you to live that way. And I'm telling you, don't let your heart be troubled. Amen. So we can either let it be troubled or we can decide, like Jesus said, to not let our heart be troubled. So how do we keep our hearts from being troubled? Well, I wanna go back to Proverbs chapter four, verses 20 through 23. Many of you know this scripture, it's one of my favorites, and we teach on this a lot, but it's so powerful and so foundational to everything in our lives. Um, here, this is, the, this is the heart of a dad, okay? Um, this is Solomon who is uh, giving instruction to his son. And he says, my son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Son, listen up, I got something I wanna say to you. Mm -hmm. Do not let my words depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of what? Your heart. Of your heart. Amen. Why? For they are life to those who find them, watch this, and health to all their flesh. Amen. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Wow, you know what? We could spend literally the rest of our minutes together tonight on the live Bible study talking about just this passage. Yeah. There's so much in this that is so uh, helpful and so uh, important for our hearts to really appreciate. But I want to say to you that we keep our hearts from being troubled by being in the Word of God and by submitting to the Spirit of God as believers that now lives on the inside of us. When we are submitted to the Spirit of God and submitted to the Word of God, this is the foundation that will keep us from living and being submitted to a troubled heart. So what we often do is uh, wrongly is we think that by uh, protecting ourselves, we're gonna keep ourselves from a troubled heart. Mm -hmm. And you know what really happens? We typically enter into isolation. When we decide to self-protect, we get into isolation and sometimes we fall into this pattern of wrong thinking to where we're trying to keep anything troublesome away from us. I used to think like this. I was gonna use my faith to keep all the troubles in life away from me. It would never touch me, praise God. Well, <laughs> you know what I discovered? It isn't even scriptural. <laughs> no, I'm gonna show you where Jesus said that in this world you will have tribulation. You will have trouble, but be of good cheer. Mm -hmm. But listen, he gave us his overcoming victory. It's in John chapter 16 and verse 33 where we find this. Mm -hmm. He said, be of good cheer. Why? Because I have overcome the world and my overcoming is your overcoming. Amen. I've given you my victory that I fought on your behalf. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So right. Jesus says, you don't have to let your heart be troubled anymore because I've overcome and I'm giving you my victory in my name to be able to overcome in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So his life uh, is really what gives you the ability to overcome in this life. And it's his life in your life that will make all the difference. The Spirit of God in us is the key, amen? amen? He's our helper. And the Word of God is alive and powerful. We don't have to try to make it alive or make it powerful, it already is. He's just looking for those of us that will believe amen. the Word of the Lord, amen? Amen. So I like to say it this way, the answer for us in learning how to not live with a heart that's overwhelmed or overloaded or troubled is spirit and truth. Hmm. That's really it. 
And Jesus said, this is the only way to have a relationship with me. It's to have a relationship in spirit, or in other words, by the Holy Spirit, and in truth, or in other words, by the Word of God. So 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 says something very, very important. And it says this, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is, watch this, in you, amen, in you, not just with you, but in you, whom you have from God and you are not your own. That's important to know. Why? Because you were bought at a price. Therefore, watch this, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Notice God wants to be glorified in your spirit, in your soul, and in your body. Your body is not your own. You've been bought with a price. So you know what? When you start living with stress and you start living in that place of agitation, you're not glorifying God. You're not glorifying God with your spirit, with your soul, or your body. You're giving into the way that the enemy would love for you to be living for the rest of your life. But Jesus said, be of good cheer. Amen. I've overcome and I've come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly, <laughs> praise God. So you don't have to live like the enemy wants you to live. We can live in our day to day, not just weekend to weekend or conference to conference, amen. But in our day to day, we can live like Jesus said we can live. And he said, I don't want you to live with a troubled heart. So you know what? Don't let your heart be troubled. Amen. 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 So let me tell you what happened to me. Many years ago, I had this supernatural encounter during worship and it literally changed my life and my future as a result. And during this encounter, God supernaturally showed me a new way of living and that his life inside me was going to be the difference maker. And there's so much more about this I would love to share with you, but it would take, again, our entire time for me to share with you the actual experience of what happened. But basically, his life became my life. Amen? And as a result of this encounter, I began to realize how much legalism I had in my limited understanding of the grace of God at the time. And I know we know in part, you know, the Bible says we know in part, we prophesy in part. So we're all growing, we're all learning, and we're all going to continue to do that for the rest of our lives. But I'm telling you, when I began to get a revelation of God's grace in my life, it was so transformational that it changed the way I was living in my day to day. And it reminds me of Mark chapter 2 and verse 22, where Jesus said, no one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, or else the new piece pulls away from the old and the tear is made worse. Well, I believe this is what happened when Jesus died on the cross. What do you mean, Daniel? Well, the veil was torn in two. Hallelujah. The new covenant pulled away from the old covenant and the new veil being torn in two was a result. And as a result of that, Jesus became the way maker. Jesus, the truth, the life, and the way. And he made a way for something brand new to be birthed. And that was the spirit of God living on the inside of us so that we could live this life as he is, not just when we get to heaven, not in the sweet by and by, but in the sweet now and now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes. First John chapter four and verse 17 says, because as he is, so are we, what? In this, in this world, not just in the world to come, but in this world. Well, listen, I don't see Jesus living his day to day stressed out. <laughs> I don't see anywhere where he's freaking out and, you know, needs to get on some meds to calm down. <laughs> he didn't see this coming. Or wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Listen, if it wasn't possible, <laughs> Jesus wouldn't have told us to do it. Amen. But he said, don't <laughs> let your heart be troubled. Praise God. I want to share some scriptures with you tonight, and then I'm going to uh, wrap this up for some Q&A. But Proverbs chapter 3. Verse five and six says, trust in the Lord, what? With all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. And what's he going to do? He will direct your paths. 
So when you trust in the Lord with all your heart, notice that if this is what's going on in your heart, there won't be room for your heart to be troubled. Why? Because you're trusting the Lord instead of a troubled heart. You're trusting the Lord with all your heart. Amen? Amen. Then in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7, he says, casting all your care or all your stress upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. You know what? We can cast all of our care upon him. Why? Because he cares for us. Amen. This is such a, a simple but profound verse of scripture. Amen. Do you know this word for uh, casting your cares in the Greek literally means to throw. <laughs> if you look it up in the Greek, it means to throw your cares over on the Lord. I was doing this one day and you know what I said? I told the Lord, I said, you know, I, I'm doing what the word says, God. I, I'm, I'm not connecting to those cares. I'm literally disconnecting. I'm not relating to the care. I'm, I'm casting it over onto you. And I said, but honestly, Lord, I feel like I'm casting my garbage on you. I, I feel like I'm just dumping my stuff on you. And you know what the Lord told me? He said, no, it's not garbage, it's praise. And I said, excuse me? And he said, when you do my word, when you do what I've told you to do, that is praise. You are glorifying me, mm -hmm. not only in your spirit, but in your soul and in your body. You are refusing to let that stress and that care land in your body. Mm -hmm. You are getting rid of it. You are disassociating from it and you are throwing it over onto me so that you don't have to carry it anymore. God. Listen, if God carried away our pains and our sorrows and our griefs and all the other stuff that he carried away that Isaiah 53 talks about and 1 Peter 5, 7, so many different places, then why on earth would we be okay with carrying it? If he already carried it away, there's no sense in both of us carrying it. Let me share a couple more here. Luke 21, 34. I love this scripture. Luke 21, Verse 34 says, but take heed to yourselves. Pay attention to what's going on in you, lest your hearts be weighed down. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? And then he goes on to say, with carousing, with drunkenness, but here's the one I wanna to emphasize tonight. Lest your hearts be weighed down with the cares of this life. Did you know the cares of this life can weigh down your heart? Mm -hmm. It can cause you to have a troubled heart. And Mark chapter four talks about how it's the cares of life that can actually choke out the word from being productive in your life. So guys, we can't afford to just be lackadaisical about, oh, well, I'm stressed, big deal, you know, pop a pill and I'll be okay. Well, you know what? You, you probably will be temporarily, but it's not gonna do anything to heal your heart and it's not going to do anything to help you establish a foundation in which you can live in the midst of anything. And God says that in all things, I will cause you to experience triumph. You will triumph in all things. You, you will experience victory in all things and in, in everything. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. Amen. So we're going to have to learn how to disassociate from all of this trouble, this agitation that the enemy would love to, for us to be okay to live with and decide, I'm not going to live like this anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to live with a merry heart. I'm going to live with a heart that's full of grace, full of cheer, full of the spirit of God, full of blessing. Amen. And as a result, how I'm going to live is going to be completely different than I would have lived otherwise. Now, lastly, let me share this, Romans 12, 1 and 2. I'm just going to share the very first part of this verse. It says that we are to present ourselves. Hmm. We. Who, who, who presents us? God? No. No. We are to present ourselves. What am I saying? You know what? We, I, for years, I was praying for God to show up. I, I didn't know that God had already told me that I need to be the one that shows up. He said, you need to present yourself. You need to be present 
because when you are present, you're not going to be living with an overloaded heart. You're not going to be living disattached. You're not going to be, you know, disconnected, disappointed, disillusioned, you know, all that dis stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But no, you are going to be living as a living sacrifice, a living offering, and you're, you're showing up. You're presenting yourself by the grace of God, the mercies of God, and thank God for his goodness because we really can live life without an overloaded heart without a troubled heart. And I just want to encourage you, no matter what you're going through tonight, you may be going through some serious, serious stuff. Listen, I know Jesus said, you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Amen. So don't let the tribulation become part of the agitation, mm -hmm. but rather allow the good cheer that God has given you by the spirit of God and by the word of God. You don't have to suck it up buttercup. You don't have to try to work it up, you know, a smile and fake it till you make it. No, listen, this is an energy that only comes by the spirit of God, who, by the way, has never had a depressed day in his life. That's the spirit of the living God that is living on the inside of you. And God says to us tonight, John 14, 1, let not your hearts be troubled. I'm telling you, this is a good day. And the Lord wants us to learn how to live with a heart that is filled with spirit and with truth. Amen. Man, that's powerful. So thank you guys for all your questions. I love all your questions. Let's get to as many as we can. Yeah, let's do so, it. So um, Diane on Facebook says, I get the don't let my heart be troubled, but you can't be helpful if you can't feel uh, people's hurt or do you ignore it so you're not troubled? Oh, interesting. No, ah. you know what Jesus said? He was always led by compassion. And isn't it interesting that this, or moved by compassion. This, he was always led by the spirit of God, but he was moved by compassion. Well, when you see someone who's troubled, you see someone who is dealing with a situation. No, what, what does compassion do? Compassion sees it, right? Compassion hears what's what's needing to be heard but it doesn't depress you it doesn't trouble you you're able to relate to it by the spirit of god and be able to be moved with compassion or moved with the love of god which of course is the answer to everything the bible says in galatians 6 that faith works by love so when we are moving in the love of God and we're seeing, man, we see this in the healing school all the time. If there was a way that I could uh, exchange my health for someone's sickness, I mean, I would, but you know what? I don't have to because Jesus already did. Amen. So his life is what provided the answer, not mine. It's not my goodness, it's his. But when I'm moved by the love of God to meet a need in someone else's life, it doesn't depress me, rather it blesses me because I know I'm just simply the agent with which the life of God can flow through. Amen. You know, uh, Mike and Carrie Pickett have a great course and they talk about the difference between um, like compassion and say mm. sympathy. Mm -hmm. So sympathy, you see it, you feel bad, right. like, oh, yeah. but compassion moves you to action. There you go. That's the difference. And that's the difference. So yeah. it doesn't affect you and no. make you depressed, but it moves you to pray for them. Yeah. It moves you to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Yeah. Right? And even Jesus experienced uh, a place in scripture that we talk about and teach on yeah. where there was a lot of unbelief. Yes. And it says he couldn't really do he any mighty do. works there right. except <laughs> heal a few sick heal folk. Heal a few sick folk, <laughs> which in today's world would be revival. Like, <laughs> you know, it's wild, right? Right? It's but so he didn't true. let their unbelief stop him. No. See, he knew what he believed, even though yeah. they were operating in unbelief. It didn't change who he was. Right. He just did what he could do in that environment and then went on to the next place. Amen. That's really good. So Chrissy on Facebook says, my heart feels closed and shut off. How do I awaken it to the life within? My relationship with Abba was once vibrant. Now I seem far away from his presence and I can't find a way for connection. 
Wow, what a what an honest question. Yeah, Thank you is. for asking that because you know what? There, I think a lot of people are in this place from one time yeah. to another. You know, the things of life uh, happen, the storms of life, the stresses of life. And if we haven't been taught on how to offload our hearts, how to cast our care over onto the Lord, we end up, uh, sadly, kind of just stuffing it all down. You know, we're like, well, I'm just going to walk in love. I'm going to I'm going to just make the best of it. And, and we don't really deal with the things that need to be dealt with and, 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 and cast off the care and the wrong thinking. Take every thought captive and bring it to the obedience of Christ. We just sort of stuff it all down someplace. And when we do that, we have a tendency to actually numb our hearts. We have a tendency to cause our hearts to become overloaded. And an overloaded heart will always be a heart that starts to feel less and less and less. Mm -hmm. So my encouragement to you tonight is begin to cast the pain, begin to cast the hurt, begin to cast all of the care, the stress of the things that need to be disconnected from your heart over onto the Lord. And you might have to do them one by one. You might have a whole list of things, but you know what? Take the time to cast that over, throw that over onto the Lord because he cares for you. And what will happen is you will find your heart once again coming alive. Amen. Man, that's good. So uh, Jim on chat says, hope deferred makes the heart grow sick. So uh, according to Proverbs 13, 12, that's true. Right? Yes, it is. Um, any encouragement? Yes. So hope deferred, you know, hope deferred is an interesting thing because there's a lot of expectation. There's a lot of things that we're uh, believing for, we're hoping for, right? But I love what Romans 5, 5 says, where the love of God that's been shed abroad in our heart because of the love of God, the hope that's in that does not disappoint. And I think that we're gonna have things in our lives that are gonna go completely different than what we were thinking they were gonna go. Maybe uh, family relationships that you're believing for uh, a particular way and someone makes a decision to go the opposite way. Those things can be very uh, hurtful, can't they? Mm -hmm. Very disappointing. But what never disappoints is the love of God. And so uh, when, when hope deferred happens, I want you to take that hope deferred and put that into a, the love of God that he has for you, amen? To know that you know that you know that God loves me. And I take that situation and you know what I do? Uh, back in the day, this is long, long ago, okay? We used to have great big rubber stamps that would, uh, you would put the rubber stamp on an ink pad and then you would stamp your important papers with whatever was on that rubber stamp. Well, take a big rubber stamp that says, stamp it temporary and take that and put that on that situation and put your hope in the love of God that he has for you, that his love for you is greater than that thing that is still being worked out because the story is not over yet. You don't have any idea yet what's down the road, but God does. And he Amen. knows the future that he has for you and that it's good and that it's full of hope. So take those disappointments and all those dis, dis, dis kind of things and give them to the Lord because in the love of God that he has for you, that hope will never disappoint. Amen. And you know what's amazing to me? I have um, a really close friend that um, she doesn't believe the way I believe, yeah. right? And so she's a worrier. Yeah. And here is the thing. It's amazing. Once you get set free from it and you look back because yeah. I used to be the same way, yeah. but every single thing she worries about, yeah. it never helps it. No, it never and then, and then once that thing goes away, yeah. there's another thing to worry about. Oh, it's like this continual cycle to where there is never a time where uh, we are not worrying about something. Right. It's just that making that choice to be like, I'm not going to worry no more. That's it. Man. Yeah, and Jesus told us not to worry, Yeah. right? He told us to be of good cheer. He told us to cast our care. Yeah. So all these things he told us were for our benefit. That's it. And we don't have to live our lives loaded down. No. You know, when people are living with a heart that is sick, 
Yeah. You know, because hope has been deferred. Yes. Man, I'm telling you, it's a big deal. It is a big deal. And we need to learn how to take all of this and do what we're talking about tonight so that we don't live with a sick heart. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Okay, so we got time for one more question. Um, guest on email says, when, um, when believing we are not to have a troubled heart, is there such a thing as a false sense of peace? I believe I have a word from God and feel peace, but the natural is not lining up with the word. Can I be missing it? Is there such a thing as a false sense of peace? You know, that's such a good question. It you, is. There, I tell you, I love our, our partners and our, you know, family online I know. because you guys really ask some great questions. Yeah. It's awesome. You know, here's the thing. The peace that you have from God is not false. It can't be false. It's the peace of God. And that peace is like an umpire. It literally is the guard that guards your heart. When I said we could spend the rest of our time tonight on Proverbs 4, when he says guard your heart, well, when you put the guard of peace at your heart's door, you know what? There's no such thing as false peace or fake peace. It's like hope that isn't real hope. I had somebody ask me one time in the healing school, they said, aren't you kind of giving people false hope? And I started thinking about that. And I thought, you know what? In Jesus, there's no such thing as Amen. false hope, as fake peace. You know, no, Jesus said, peace I give you, not as the world gives you. So what the world has is the false. What the world has is the fake. But by the spirit of God, we've got the real deal. Amen. And so let that peace of God that's in you, you're not trying to get it. You've already got it. Amen. Amen. It's a peace that passes all understanding. Even when you can't figure it out with your brain, man, you know what? You can lean in on the peace of God and just say, thank you, God, that I've got a peace that passes my understanding. And that peace will guard. It'll be an umpire on your heart to where what flows out of your heart is going to be producing life and health. Amen. Man, that's powerful. So we've come down to an end. Thank you, Already. Daniel. Already. Man. Wow. I know. It goes so fast, <laughs> it doesn't it? It goes by really fast. <laughs> Absolutely. And thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I just want to let you know, we didn't get to even a tip of the iceberg of the amazing questions that you guys submitted tonight, but don't be discouraged. We do every Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m. We do a Q&A roundup. And that is on our Facebook page. So, so good. I would encourage you to tune in and watch there. We have one of our amazing instructors. Um, I think Barry Bennett's handling it mostly right now, he but does, he'll go yeah. through and pull out questions and answer it. So if you have a burning question that you didn't get answered tonight, please go to our Facebook page or Andrew Womack Ministries Facebook page and like us, and then you'll get a notification. Otherwise, it's at 3 p.m on Tuesday afternoon and you can possibly get your question answered. Are you are you actually telling people please like us? Yeah. <laughs> I know. Go right? figure. <laughs> so don't forget, we also have live Bible study tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Mountain Time. So yeah. you can tune in there. And um, Daniel, you have an amazing night. That Thank was such you a blessing. So much. Yeah. Absolutely. And you guys have a great night and we'll see you later. We love Bye. you. Bye bye. If we understand how much God loves us, then healing becomes so easy to receive. Healing is God's love language. You've got the same power on the inside of you that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. We fight the fight of faith from a place of victory. You got everything that it takes to see the blind eyes open, the deaf ears open, to walk free, to come out of wheelchairs, to be 100% free. Your life is about to change. Welcome to a new normal. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 